So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we actually have a, a visitor uh, today. We have uh, Ulysses here. Uh, he's uh, from France coming to uh, observe our class. So I'd appreciate uh, everybody who's on their best behavior and refrain from uh, talking shit about me. Um, but uh, what we're going to do to start out with today is to go through uh, the homework that we had. And this really carries through from what we had talked about in class yesterday, and that's how do we uh, solve these uh, differential equations equations that we get from uh, applying Faraday's law. Uh, now the thing that's a little bit different about this one than the one that we had in the, uh, the, the, homework, or the classwork yesterday was that in the classwork I told you that there was some battery that, that was in this loop. Um, this loop actually only has a resistor and then it also has some uh, inductance that is given by L. Um, but instead of giving you a battery, what I said was there was this time dependent magnetic field that flows through the battery, or through the, um, the loop. And what we're going to see when we uh, set up our equation is that actually serves exactly the same purpose as having a battery. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, uh, get started with this one. So uh, to start with, uh, this is uh, Faraday's law in its most general form. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is kind of break it apart the way that I'd, I'd shown you how to do that in the notes. So really, this is the total magnetic field that, that passes through the loop. And that can be one part, the the external magnetic field in one part, the uh, magnetic field that's produced uh, by the current that goes through this. So this can actually be broken apart to say that this is minus partial derivative with respect to T, integral of B external dot DA minus partial derivative with respect to time of the integral of B induced dot DA. And what we saw was that this term right here can actually be written as a plus or minus L D I D T. And we'll talk about, as we go through this, whether this is going to be plus or whether it's going to be minus based on the direction that we choose for dA. So usually what I like to do to start with these is to start by saying, uh, what is dA? So we choose it in the, in the direction of uh, the, the magnetic field that we have originally here. And so we say then that dA goes this way. There is the connection between dA and dL uh, via the right-hand rule, so thumb in the direction dA, curl in the direction of uh, dL, and so we can say that dL goes this way, and we also say that the current goes that way. Okay. So what that allows us to do here is it allows us to say that this term right here, we can evaluate this, this dot product because it's going to be in the same direction. So what this says is this is minus partial derivative with respect to time, integral B external times dA without the dot product because these are just in the same direction, right? We've seen this plenty of times. Uh, I tell you here that this loop uh, has some area of A, and so this integral is actually very easy to do. What we can do is we can bring B external on the outside because it uh, doesn't vary with position. So this is going to be uh, minus partial derivative with respect to time, B external, integral dA. And we know very well what, what this should be. We've seen this plenty of times. If we have the integral of just some D something, we just get that something. So this is the integral dA, so that gives us just A. Nice partial derivative with respect to time. I'll also plug in what uh, the magnitude of B external is here. B0 T over tau uh, times uh, A. We can take our partial derivative and it says that this is minus B0 A divided by tau. Okay. Now let's look at what, what's going to happen with uh, this one. So we say that our current is going to be going around in this direction. That was the choice that we had made. And so the magnetic field that's produced by that current, the induced magnetic field, is going to be pointing in. Right? So B induced is going to be pointing in because we can use our right hand and we say, okay, well, our thumb goes in the direction of I, goes around like this, curl in the direction of B induced, this goes this way. And so that means that the dot product here is going to give me a positive. But I also have a negative sign here. And because of that negative sign, I'm going to end up having, this is going to be minus L di dt, okay? Does everybody follow that? Okay, 
So that takes care of the right hand side. The left hand side is exactly the same as it was when we did our time independent circuits. DL parameterizes the loop that we're going around. So we're going around this way. The current is going through the resistor this way. And so this is going to give me some plus IR. And we're almost to the point where we have a differential equation we can solve. Let's just put this in its standard form. And so that's just to move this over to this side. So we say that L di dt plus I r is equal to minus B0 A over T over tau. Okay? Now, this is that standard form that we saw for the, um, the first order uh, linear inhomogeneous uh, differential equation, right? So we, we went through what, what all those terms mean, and we had the process that we could go through to solve this. And so in order to solve this, what we say is that uh, I, uh, the general solution of I of t is equal to the homogeneous solution plus the particular solution. Okay, and uh, it was noted yesterday that, uh, and I, I was saying I might put this, this derivation on the exam, and I realized I really can't do that because there's a lot of different ways to do this. This is just the way that I'm approaching this, and ultimately the reason why I'm doing it this way is because I don't want you to have to use a, a use substitution. But somebody has mentioned that you can, you can do this with an integrating factor. You can also do this directly by, uh, by uh, separation of variables. If, uh, if you use a uh, use substitution. But this is just the way that I'm going to show you how to do this. So what's meant by the homogeneous solution? Well, that's the solution when this term is zero. So we could rewrite this equation. L d i sub h dt plus i sub h times r is equal to zero. And then solve this equation. So what we did here was we applied separation of variables. So that says L di sub h dt is equal to minus i sub h times r. And we wanted to get all of the i's on one side of the equation and all of the t's on, on the other side of the equation. And I'm also going to move my, my L over here. So move the L over here. Move the i over to here. So this is 1 over i sub h. And then multiply both sides by dt. And so then I have this. That was a little quick, but does, does everybody follow the algebra I did there? I'm just rearranging this so I have from this line only my i's on the left side, and then my everything else is going to be on the right side. Is okay? Okay. So now that we have this equation, what we can do is we can integrate this. And so when we integrate this, this is just, this is like a, a dx over x, right? So this is going to give me some natural log. So this is ln i sub h uh, is going to be equal to, this is just uh, some constant times dt. So this is minus uh, r divided by l times t. And then we get some constant integration that I'm going to just call gamma here. Now to solve for i sub h, we just exponentiate both sides. And so we say then that i sub h of t is going to be equal to minus r, to, uh, this is um, gamma e to the minus r over l times t. Okay, so I just, I exponentiate both sides here. And this, this gamma is really not the same as this gamma, it's uh, uh, an e to the gamma, but I, I didn't say what this constant was to start with, so I can, I'm free to say it is whatever it is, it's just some constant. We'll, we'll solve for it in, in the end. Okay, so homogeneous solution is actually the one that's a little bit harder to define. The particular solution, the asymptotic solution, which is really what, what happens with the time independent case, that's, that's what, what's happening when, uh, when you wait a really long time to see what happens with this circuit, is that's when uh, the current's not changing anymore. So that's when the, um, the time derivative is zero. And so that's to say that I sub p, uh, is going to be equal to, or r times i sub p is equal to minus b0 a over tau. Uh, and then we can solve for i sub p just by moving the r over to here. Okay. So we're almost there. We have our, our homogeneous solution. We have our particular solution. We just need to add them together. And so that says i sub g of t is equal to gamma e to the minus r divided by l times t minus b0 a over tau times r. Okay? Everybody happy so far? And we're finished, right?
No, somebody, somebody's shaking their head. No, why, why aren't we finished? It's by gamma. Yeah, we don't know what gamma is, right? Now, I actually, I, I should have given you an initial condition here. I didn't. Um, but let's say that the initial condition is that uh, at time t is equal to zero, the current is zero. Okay. So that's to say that I sub g of t is equal to zero, is equal to zero. And so what that says when I evaluate for zero in this equation, I get this is going to be gamma minus B zero A over tau times R. And then uh, this says that uh, gamma is equal to B zero A over tau times R. So the final answer that we have here is that, now right up here, because I don't know if you guys can see over my computer. Um, this is going to be uh, I sub G of T is equal to B zero a over tau, r e to the minus r uh, divided by lt minus b zero a divided by tau times r. Okay, and that's it. Now. I say like a lot of the problems are, are really the same. Um, what, what could be different about this? What, what's something that I could change to, to make this problem a little bit different? Directions. Yeah, I could, I could change the directions that I, that I chose here, right? Like you, you could have drawn it to go the other way. Um, ultimately, that should give the same answer, right? Because the, the physics should be independent of what direction I'm saying is positive or negative. Um, something I could change is I could, I could change uh, what my function is, right? I could, I could give you a different uh, b as a function of time. I could put a battery in here too. What, what happens if I put a battery here? What happens if I, if I do this? How is that going to manifest itself in, in our equations here? Right, right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get another v term in here when I, when I go around my loop, right? So I go around this loop, and that, that was uh, this portion right here, right? Uh, I see the minus side of the terminal, of the battery. This is going to be minus v, right? Uh, I could put a second resistor in here, right? Then you get another, another ir here. Um, I could. What else could I do? I could tell you that, that the initial condition is different. I could tell you that instead of uh, the current being zero at time t is equal to zero, it has some value i, right? Now, there's one more thing that I could, that I could change, and that's actually getting into, into what the, whole, the classwork for today is. Um, you can obtain a, a similar form of the equation like this for different circuit components. And that's, that's a good jumping off point for what we're, what we're gonna be doing today. Yeah? Can you just briefly explain again like how you determine the sign of the L, D, I over T? Sure, sure. So, okay. there's, there's already a negative sign here out front, right, just from definition of Faraday's law. Um, and you could either have a positive or a negative sign from the dot product if, if these are either in the same direction or, or, sorry, if they're in the same direction or if they're in exact opposite directions. So the question is for the way that we've defined things here, are they in the same direction or are they in opposite directions? So I said that DA, when I, when I started the problem, I said DA is going to point in the direction of the external magnetic field. So that DA is, it has to be the same DA for both of these. So that's, that's that's DA for the, for the whole thing. I said that that's pointing in. So then the question is, if I, if I say the current's going around this way, what's the direction of the induced magnetic field? And so what we can do is we can take our thumb and point in the direction of that current and curl in the direction of the magnetic field that that, that current produces. And in the loop of wire, this induced magnetic field points in, which is the same direction. So that says that this dot product is going to be positive, but I'll have a negative sign out front. So that's, that's why it's negative right here. Okay. And for, for the convention that, that I use, and for the second, the second part of the, the classwork today, I, I basically tell you not to use the convention that I use because I want you to, to kind of play around with this. But for the convention that I use, this is always negative. But it's, it, it's a good question, and it's, it's important to see why that, that's the case. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. That was kind of going off of my question. So because the DAs are always the same, mm -hmm. will that always turn out to be negative just because it's the way we chose DA initially? Yeah, that's ultimately what it, what it comes down to. The fact that I'm, I'm, I'm fixing DA to be in the same direction as the induced magnetic field, that's, that, well, it's that in conjunction with the fact that I'm choosing my current to point in the same direction as DL. 
I could have chosen my current to go the other way. If I'd chosen the current to go the other way, then this, I'd, I'd have, I'd, I would get another negative sign over here. Yeah, the, the negative signs will always take take care of each other. Um, you just have to be consistent with them. So, exactly, exactly. This is I I I I drop a mass. Is its acceleration positive or negative? Well, it, it depends if I'm saying up is positive or down is positive. But you you have to make a choice, and then the physics will come out the same regardless. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and get started on the classwork, and then I'll come around and answer questions that you guys have.